friends, and welcome to the Game So Canada for July of 2020. I'm Mark Power, coming to you from my kitchen, because during this whole COVID-19 pandemic, like a lot of us, I've been able to be at home a lot more and be able to do a lot of my own cooking. And today I'm actually going to be making a game show gumbo after finding a great recipe online. So maybe this is something you'd like to try too. I'll leave, so stay tuned after the credits and I'll share the recipe with you. But it's appropriate that we're doing this this month because, like a gumbo, when you add too many elements to a game show, so you can really screw it up. And it just makes things absolutely horrible. Ow! Oh, boy. Uh, eh, that's not too bad, I guess. So anyway, let's take a look now at Edible Incredible. Pinch of salt. Yeah! Edible Incredible was a short-lived kids' cooking show that had a lot of elements from other shows in it. And I'll be keeping track of that as we go along. The host of the show is American-born actress Julie Swillich. And given all the chaos that she has to deal with, she actually does a pretty good job. Along with her, our professional chef Alex Orlando, who seems like he doesn't really want to be there, but for the sake of the kids, he's putting on a brave face and getting through it. And actor Mike Patterson has Sam, the gross grocer. And I have to say, Mike Patterson is way too into his character. I get it that he's trying to be a little bit zany because it's a kid's show, but there's a difference between being zany and looking like you did a bunch of cocaine before the show. As I said, there are a lot of elements to the show. First off, two contestants play. Contestants are conned into being on the show, candid camera style. As they first walk into the studio, everyone yells surprise, and they are treated to the first portion of the show, the hot seat, later renamed the grill, where they're, the kids are lightly mocked for their favorite foods and least favorite foods and other elements of their lives. So basically this plays off of uh, the Dean Martin or Comedy Central celebrity roasts. And one problem with this, though, was showing Sam the gross grocer rooting through a little girl's bedroom. Size. Well, brace yourself, because I'm heading into your bedroom! Oh. You didn't say that. Tell me you did not just say that. Seriously, they didn't think that came across as a little bit creepy? Oh, well, at least he's still not the furry Oliver level. Good answer. <laughs> so probably because of that, this was downplayed in the second season. The first actual game consists of both contestants racing through a small supermarket trying to find the ingredients for the day's dish. On the list there are seven ingredients. And as the kids are shopping through the aisles, None of the shelves are labeled, and the producers try to trip up the kids by placing similar items next to the actual item. On one, sometimes two, or sometimes three occasions, the shopping is interrupted for a grossicle, which consists of a potentially messy stunt double dare like that the contestants will have to complete before they can continue shopping. Some episodes also feature a mercy rule, so that it, the contestant is allowed to continue so, after trying for so long after the first contestant completes the stunt. The first contestant to complete their shopping then races to the checkout and hits a buzzer. And their opponent will have to immediately stop and whatever they have, they have. Sam then reviews the contestant's purchases. Every time they get a correct item, they score one point. And the show is very strict about this. So, for instance, if a contestant had grabbed curly leaf parsley, when the list called for flat leaf parsley, they would be called wrong. Jesus, kids, lighten up, will ya? The 
During the first season, this hit was followed up by The Secret Ingredient. Sam Gross would ask both contestants a series of Who Am I type clues to the identity of the dish's secret ingredient. If, it, if a contestant could buzz in identifying the first clue, they scored three points. Second clue, two points. Third clue, one point. By the third clue, it was pretty much a dead giveaway. After this, the contestant chooses two of their taste buds. Admittedly, that's pretty clever. We then watch a short video of Chef Alex Orlando showing the kids how to cook the day's special dish. After watching this video, the kids then go into the cooking ring. And this just feels like a ripoff of either Chopped or Iron Chef. The teams race to complete the day's special dish. At this point, they are provided with all the correct ingredients. It's unclear how much time they have since there's no clock, and that's really missing here, because that would really add some suspense. Another big problem is the rules as far as having Chef Alex Orlando on hand, who actually supervises the, the kids during this to make sure they are handling safe food procedures and not putting themselves in danger. During the round, the chefs can ask Orlando one question. However, in some episodes, there are unlimited questions, but each one will cost them a point. Other episodes, they get one free question, and every additional question costs them a point. This clearly is a problem of airing episodes out of order. I wish shows would really stop doing that. It would be, they would make things a lot easier on themselves and their viewers. Once the cooking is completed, Alex then judges each dish based on its presentation and how well the kids did as far as following the recipe, awarding them anywhere from one to three points for each. In the second season, when the secret ingredient question was eliminated, this was changed so that Alex would award anywhere from 1 to 5 points. After this round, each contestant chooses 5 more taste buds from the audience, who will then sample each dish. While sampling the dish, the kids wear fogged or tinted glasses so that they can't tell which dish is whose. Contestants score one point for each main course and one point for each dessert that their taste buds preferred. Whoever scores the most points at the end of the game is the winner and receives a choice of one of two or sometimes three prize packages, although both contestants receive a special gift just for being there. And needless to say, they screwed up their game show gumbo as it were by putting too many elements into one show. And not to mention the fact that one of their hosts came off looking like a coke-fueled perf. And anyway, despite an injury, the gumbo actually looks pretty good. So I hope you do try it at home. Remember, I will be sharing the recipe after the credits, so stay tuned for that. And let's give it a taste. Hmm, not bad, but it can use some hot sauce. So next time in the Game Show Canada, we'll be looking at another food-based show. And as much as Supermarket Sweep was a disappointment here in Canada, there was a show that came on before it that was an even bigger disappointment. And that was Food for Thought. Hope to see you then. Until next time on the Games of Canada, I'm Mark Power saying bon appetit and long may your big jib draw. Become a Patreon backer at 
www.patreon.com slash gameshowgumbo or check out our website www.gameshowgumbo.com This has been an impressive production. To make the official Game Show Gumbo, start with a quarter cup of olive oil, one cu- quarter cup of flour, one cup of chicken broth, two stalks of celery chopped, one white onion chopped, one red or green bell pepper chopped, four to five chopped okra, one cup of blanched shrimp, two to three smoked sausages, salt, pepper, Cajun seasoning, and optional hot sauce. Heat the oil in a skillet and whisk in the flour to make a roux. Add all vegetables and simmer until tender. Add chicken broth, simmer until boiling, then add sausage and shrimp. Simmer until shrimp begin to turn opaque, stirring often. Season with salt, pepper, and Cajun seasoning, and optional hot sauce. Serve over rice. Enjoy.